Star Wars 7x7 episode 2436. So the audiobook situation with Victory's Price is rather interesting, and we're going to talk about that as well as give it a review today. Punch it. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So Victory's Price, the audiobook, and you know the funny thing is, <laughs> is that I think I had heard previously that Alexander Freed thought Victory's Price was the longest book of the Alphabet Squadron trilogy. And I went trying to see if I could dig up information about that. So, you know, you could look at a page count situation, but it's not necessarily going to, you know, equally match from book to book because you never know whether the pages are set the same way and, um, you know, where page breaks happen and all these sorts of things. Um, chapters and parts and blah, blah, blah. So I <laughs> went looking it up anyway. And it does seem like, at the very least, Alphabet Squadron, the original novel, was the shortest of them, coming in at 416 pages. Shadowfall came in at 528 and Victory's Price only comes in at 480 pages. Again, you know, it doesn't necessarily tell us for sure, but the audiobook situation is another indicator. And so the audiobook reading for Alphabet Squadron was 13 hours and 50 minutes. The Shadowfall one was 14 hours and 47 minutes, so definitely longer. And if it had followed the page count, then you would have expected Victory's Price to come in somewhere between the two. But no, <laughs> it's actually the longest of all, 16 hours and 19 minutes. I would say <laughs> I would have been okay with it even being a little bit longer as it turns out. So let's start off by talking about the fact that Victory's Price is narrated by January Lavoie. And this is a rather unusual situation in the sense that when you have the books like this, for example, books that are all part of one big story, you tend to expect the narrator of the audiobook to stay the same throughout. Like, for example, if you want to pick a Thrawn trilogy, for example, you have Mark Thompson, who does all the Thrawn books, for example. So there is some consistency there. That has not been the case with the Alphabet Squadron trilogy. They have had different narrators for each of the three books. It was Saskia Marleveld for the original Alphabet Squadron, then Carol Monda for Shadowfall, and now January Lavoie for Victory's Price. And I think that if there's an Alphabet Squadron reunion story or novel or something like that if they decide to ever get the band back together, as it were. I hope that they hire all three of these narrators to tell the story. I feel like there are some, you know, there's some performances of some characters that I prefer over some other ones. And so, you know, not to dig into that too deeply, I'll just say for the sake of transparency and honesty in the conversation that I really feel like I got imprinted basically by Saskia Marleveld's performance of Erica Quell and I've been kind of measuring up the subsequent performances of Carol Monda and January Lavoie against that and that's not fair by any stretch of the imagination and you know I continually like step back from it to look at the objective situation and <laughs> that said just you know I gotta be honest with you, that's where it's coming from. I do really like January Lavoie's performance though. The thing that feels very right about the way that she portrays Erica Quell is you can hear the brokenness in her voice and in her characterization and in her performance. That's not to say that Quell isn't still dangerous, doesn't still have an edge. What it you know, means is basically it's like listening to somebody who is for all intents and purposes, you know, stretched out barbed wire. Let's, you know, think of it that way, right? I mean, you know, she is not necessarily aggressive by intention or desire, but she is certainly dangerous. And she has certainly been through so much that she's been, you know, pushed to her limits. And even the tiredness, a lot of the characters in Victory's Price are tired. They've been fighting 
for so long and without respite at all. They've just been worn down to you know the bare nerves of themselves. And you can hear it in January Lavoie's performance. And so that was tremendous. And her characterization of Harrison Dula is also very well done. And that's another one where you gotta do something really good with that one because everybody who knows Harrison Dula has a very strong picture in their heads about Hera. And it's not January Lavoie's job or Carol Monda before her or Saskia Marleveld before her to try to imitate Vanessa Marshall, to try to recreate her voice. The job is to portray the character as best as possible. And so, you know, yeah, you're certainly going to hear an echo of Vanessa Marshall to some degree regardless, because how could you not, right? But none of these women are trying to you know, mimic or, you know, somehow recreate Vanessa Marshall's performance. They're trying to give it their own. And January Lavoie does a wonderful job investing her own skill and talent and perception into Hera as well. And as far as the rest of the production goes, you know, I've, I'm trying to think back on the original Alphabet Squadron and on Shadowfall, but I feel like the music has been a stronger part of Victory's Price compared to the other two, at least in my recollection of those, that the you know, music of Star Wars is stronger and has a you know more visceral presence in Victory's Price than it had in the previous ones, and I enjoyed that. After all, the music is a big part of what makes Star Wars Star Wars. And the music, of course, is right in that original trilogy wheelhouse because we are really still close to the events of the original trilogy in this thing. If there's one thing that, you know, I would say uh, that I wish were different about the thing, I would say that, shockingly enough, <laughs> I would feel like it could be longer. It could actually be a little bit longer and I would have been okay with that. And the reason why I think that is that, just to pick an example, there are some deep philosophical conversations that Erica Quell and Soren Keyes have about the Empire and about the Rebellion slash New Republic and what the fate of the Empire's defectors and eventually, you know, captured soldiers and staff will be. And we talked in the podcast about how one of the you know major driving forces of Victory's Price is the fact that Soren Keys is a man in search of a purpose, not just for himself, but also for shadowing, and that through the course of the novel he discovers and you know comes to arrive at what his purpose will be and then acts to fulfill it, while the New Republic is trying to figure out just what the heck is going on. And so those deep philosophical conversations that Soren Keyes has with Erica Quell over the course of the novel, those are conversations that, you know, as I read, I could take it a little bit slower because they, you know, get into some pretty heady stuff. But on the audiobook version of it, you know, that could have slowed down a little bit for me. And I would have enjoyed being able to digest it at, you know, a little bit slower clip. But that's, you know... Probably not so much a criticism as just a note for my own ability to consume books in the audiobook format. But I really enjoyed it. I think they did a great job. And as a trilogy, it's an unusual situation because of the three narrators. And I think it actually ends up serving the whole project really well and fascinatingly so. But I will stand by my request. I'll just put it out there that if there is ever another Alphabet Squadron story told that we get all three of them, Saskia, Marleveld, Carol Monda, and January Lavoie involved in the project together. And that is going to do it for this episode of the show today. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, but their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.